G'day everyone. So today's video is a species uh, specific video. Due to the COVID restrictions, obviously we can't get out and fish um, at the moment. So what I want to bring to you guys is a couple of videos on specific species that I like to target. Um, I'm going to run you through the rods, the reels, the tackle, the lures, baits, plastics, Pretty much everything there is that I use to target a certain species of fish. Today's video, I'm going to start with whiting. Uh, first rod in question is the Savage Gear Purpose Predator rod. Uh, these rods are these ones here. Um, this is the Savage Gear Purpose Predator. Black and gold, so as you all know, if you've been watching my videos, I am a Richmond fan, so perfect for me, black and gold. Savage Gear Purpose Predator. Uh, this is the six foot 10, two piece, two to four kilo rod. Um, fairly light in the tip, so it's good for all your whiting bites. I've pretty much been using these for probably the last 18 months, I think, for these rods. Um, and if you're looking for a budget rod, I mean, heading to BCF, head into Hooked on Bait and Tackle, head into Anaconda. You can pick up a fairly decent um, budget whiting rod or a rod that you can target whiting with. The second rod in question that I had built for me, um, I've got two of them. Now, as you all know, like I said, I'm a Richmond fan. And if you've been watching my videos, um, I have had some custom built fishing rods made by JD Custom Rods. Um, he's a local to the Werribee area and does an absolutely cracker job on custom built fishing rods. Pretty much any spec, any size, any weight class, um, any color, you tell him what you want and he will work with you perfectly on getting you the best possible rod that you can get. Um, these whiting rods I had custom made so again, these are the seven foot rods, uh, JD Customs, golden black guides. Um, issue I have, haven't been able to get out and use them yet. Um, had them built during, just before the stage four lockdowns. So I'm hanging to get out and use them. So anyway, these ones are seven foot, uh, one piece. I, I opted with the one piece. Um, fast to medium action and perfect. They're gonna be absolutely dynamite for whiting fishing. Um, I can't thank John enough for the brilliant job that he's done on these rods and in communication the whole time um, to make sure that I was happy with the exact rod, the exact length, the size, the weight class, everything. Um, they're two to four kilo rods and I'm extremely happy with them. All right, so up next, we've spoken about the rods that I use. Um, we're gonna talk about reels to match these rods. Um, as you can see here, I've got the Shimano Sienna 2500 matched up with the, matched up to the Purpose Predator rod. Um, the Shimano Sienna reels, dynamite. I have no issues using these whatsoever. All up, I think I've got six. Um, I've got two of the smaller ones and four of the 4,000 size reels. Um, and they're absolutely perfect for a budget reel and a budget rod. I mean, I think it all up, 70 bucks for a whiting combo. Um, now, for the budget conscious person, that is absolutely brilliant, 70 bucks. You, you can't ask for much more. All right. The second reel in question, I have paired up to the Richmond custom built JD rod. Um, and that reel is this guy here. This is the Pen Battle 3. Um, I have two of these uh, paired up on the two JD custom rods that I had built. Um, all up, I brought four of these reels. I've got two of the 2500s and two of the 5000 size reels for the bigger rods. Um, 
all purchased from Hooked on Bait and Tackle. Can I just say, Mick and Mel from, and Hannah that works at Hooked on Bait and Tackle, absolutely brilliant. Best help, best guidance, always up for a chat. Head in, give them a, give them a helping hand once COVID restrictions have been lifted. They've been closed for a couple of weeks. Um, so any chance we get, get in there, buy some goodies, um, get them back on their feet for the price. And the fact that they're gold and black, um, they suit the rod perfectly. Haven't had a chance to use the smaller ones, but I have used the bigger ones. Brilliant. The drag system is perfect. Absolutely flawless. I can't floor these reels. Um, they've got a gear ratio on the smaller ones of 6.2 to 1. So every handle, every turn of that handle, you get six revolutions of the, of the reel. Um, so you get a lot of line back fairly quickly. All right, guys. So up next, we've got tackle. Um, and this is going to be fairly basic. But when I'm bait fishing for whiting, uh, this is some of the tackle that I use. I'll go into rigs and stuff um, after this, but I'll just explain the tackle that I've got here in front of me. Um, so what we use, I am a stickler for the Black Magic KL10 hooks. Um, that's these guys here. Um, these are perfect for whiting fishing. Um, I usually run these on either a run and sinker or a paternoster rig. But the KL hooks, they're pretty much like circle hooks. Uh, you don't want to strike too early. Pretty much just lift your rod tip, let the fish do all the work. And more so if you've got it on a running sinker rig, probably run about a meter of fluorocarb leader um, and then down to some little pink beads um, and then a 10 KL black magic hook. The other types of hooks that I use are these guys here. These are size six long shank hooks. Um, again, perfect run for run and sinker, perfect for pattern osters, um, perfect for whiting. The sinker size I use, look, it depends on where you're fishing and the current and the tide, everything else. Pretty much the same as everywhere you fish. Depends on the current and the tide. Um, for where I fish down at Campbell's Cove, and down at Avalon Beach. Um, these sinkers here, the size O rocket sinkers, uh, they're the ones with the swivels in the top, so it's gonna stop your line from spinning as well. Um, the only thing you need to add to it really is, we'll get rid of this here, um, is your leader. Six pound leader, three kilo strength, uh, 30 meter spools, and like I said, out of that, I could pretty much make 30 run and sinker rigs or 30 paternoster rigs. Um, so overall, that's not costing me an arm and a leg. Uh, paternoster style rig there. Now, if you learn to tie knots, there's no reason you can't make these yourself. Um, and like I said, a couple of bucks for a packet of hooks, a couple of bucks for a bag of sinkers, a couple of bucks for some swivels, get yourself a good quality fluorocarb leader and you can tie these yourself. What I wanna to go to next is baits. Um, I use pippies and squid strips for whiting. Um, unfortunately, I am not a very good squid fisherman. Uh, you'll probably see that I don't have a single squid video um, on my YouTube channel. I normally buy my bait from Hooked On Bait and Tackle, uh, these guys up here. Check them out if you're a local in the Werribee Hoppers area. Uh, Mick and Mel run one of the best tackle stores around. Um, they've always got fresh bait. Um, they've got live bait, they've got fresh bait, they've got frozen bait. Um, and their tackle store is absolutely amazing. I like to put a pippy on the hook first, uh, just thread it on a couple of times. And then I will get a little tiny squid strip um, and put that over the top. Pretty much just pinning it the squid strips I normally use when I'm targeting whiting are about that big. Um, and all you want to do with them, so once you put your pippy on your hook, all you want to do then is pretty much, that's how I fish my squid strips. So I've got the pippy at the back of the hook, 
squid strip on the front. So whiting's gonna come along and just suck that whole thing in. Uh, most whiting will fit this hook into their mouth, um, unless you're getting really small ones on the chew. But I haven't had an issue yet, and that seems to work. If they suck the pippy off the bottom of the hook, nine out of 10 times they'll come back because you've still got that squid strip uh, sitting on the hook and they'll come back and that's what you get them on. You can also, in the Campbell's Cove area, off uh, just north of Werribee South, where I normally go, um, in the shallows, you can actually collect your own pippies. It is a time consuming effort. Um, unfortunately, you're not allowed to use a pippy rake anymore in the intertidal zones. Um, so you pretty much stand there in the soft sand, wiggle your feet in the soft sand, and you can actually feel them underneath your feet. They could be anywhere from an inch, inch and a half under the, under the sand to three or four inches. Um, but you'll feel them with your feet and then just dig down and pull them out. I remember one night there, uh, I was down there with the family and I think we picked up 50 pippies between four of us in a matter of half an hour um, and then used them for bait and had a fairly good session on them. Um, so if you've got the time, by all means, take the kids out even. Uh, obviously not during winter, but during summer, the pippies will be there. They're always there. So let's talk uh, tides and areas we want to look for. So if I'm fishing off Campbell's Cove, uh, I want to fish there with an incoming tide. Um, I've had more luck down there with an incoming tide than I have an outgoing tide for whiting. Um, Campbell's Cove is reasonably flat. There's not a lot of structure down there, um, but you just want to find two weedy patches with a sand patch in the middle. Um, and what you're going to find is if you can anchor up and fish the edge of those weed beds, you're going to get the whiting going from weed bed to weed bed. Um, ideally, you want to burly up. So I make my own burly. Um, if you've seen my Instagram feed um, or my Facebook posts, um, you'll see that I've actually started making my own burley. It's pretty much all the old fish heads, old fish carcasses. Um, I had some old bait laying around, some old pippies that were well and truly past their use by date. Um, they all went into the Nutribullet, blitzed them all up, turned them into a fish milkshake and freeze them in 1.25 litre uh, bottles. What I find is I cut the top off the bottles, uh, leaves them about yay high. That log is perfectly suited to my burly bucket or burly cage that I have. What I have found though, if you don't get a bite, if you find a spot and you think it's fishy enough and you don't get a bite in the first 20 minutes, move because the fish aren't there. It's as simple as that. Um, so keep moving around until you find them. Once you find the fish, you're gonna be laughing, you'll be on. Um, and it's pretty much gonna be a fisher cast. Um, so all in all, I hope this video has given you some clarity, uh, given you some ideas on how you can go out, um, buy a cheap rod, buy a cheap reel, um, learn how to tie some knots and make your own rigs. Uh, don't be afraid to try them. Gives you a sense of accomplishment uh, when you can tie your own rigs and catch fish on, on your own rigs. Um, but anyways, guys, I hope, hope you've enjoyed that uh, video on how to catch a whiting, uh, how I target whiting and how I catch whiting. Um, I'll put a short snippet up here next um, of the KL hooks in action. And until next time, guys, see you on the water. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. Uh, every subscription helps. Um, also want to say thank you to my current subscriber base. I have reached the magic 500 mark. Um, it's been about 18 months in the making. It's very time consuming, um, but it has paid off and we're getting there. Anyways, cheers guys. Thanks a lot. See you later.